I've had somebody for a while now that's been asking me to make an knife farm, and I've put together one with a kind of a sack shaped blade and some pecan wood that I had around, and a 256 layer billet of steel that I forged up. Now that the knife's done, I need to make a sheath for it. And I decided to do a little bit different style on this one than any of them that I've done in previous videos. And it's more like a, um, a western style holster, the cowboy holsters, the single loop drop style. Uh, sometimes it's called a Mexican loop holster. And that's going to make the belt loop on it is um, that the knife sheath has to actually fold down and around and tuck through the leather that we're going to cut out into slots there. So it's just a matter of, as the usual, cutting out some pieces of leather out of, this is some six to seven ounce, and I cut out enough for the back piece, and then I rough cut out what's going to be, I've got it marked, um, the front pieces. And then it's just some trimming, some punching some holes, for any corners that I have so that I don't have any sharp corners that are going to tear out. I want a round hole in those and cut away from the holes. And I'm leaving this little spur sticking out the side and that'll catch uh, when I go to tuck it back through the, the loop through those slots. It'll catch on those and keep it from moving around. And I'm here I mentioned the four holes that are going to be for those slots that I'm talking about. I'm not going to actually cut them out until later, but I'll connect these holes together. And then I cut out the front piece, and I'll cut out another piece that I'll remove uh, the shape of the blade from to make the spacer. And I'll go back to my paper pattern to get that shape for the spacer. The outside of it's the exact same shape as the, um, the back and the front of the sheath, but I'll use the uh, lines from when I took the tracing of the knife to mark where the inside of the hole for the spacer is going to be. Again, punch a hole so I don't have a, a cut corner in there, even though there, it's probably not going to be under much strain. And just use the round knife to cut away everything that's basically shaped like the blade to make the pocket the blade's going to fit in. And I need to rub cut out some three to four ounce leather that I'll use for lining uh, the sheath in this case. Then it's on to some stitching grooves, which will go all the way around on the front of the sheath, but only on the part of the back of the sheath that's not covered by the front, if that makes sense. Now I'm going to mark where those um, slots need to be, and I'll go ahead and cut those out also with the round knife, just cutting from each side, from the holes to the center, 
and make four cuts to cut those out, which I didn't actually remember to film. But we'll move on. Um, I did not also film carving this. It's just some uh, personalization for the person I'm making the sheath for. Since it did, wasn't actually his name and doesn't identify him, I decided I could still use it for a video. But normally I would not use any of the items I make that are really personalized for somebody in videos. Uh, because I don't want to have their name on something that's uh, I'm putting out on the internet for everyone to see. So in this case, it's not identifying, but if it was somebody's name, I would not have made a video of it. And it's just a matter of starting to assemble. I'm going to glue the lining pieces onto the, uh, the main leather parts of the sheath. As usual, using a piece of scrap leather to spread the glue out is a lot quicker than sitting there with that brush. Get a nice thin even coat works a lot better than having thick globs of glue. And I'll get the sheet glued together like this. I'll go down and sew it on the sewing machine, but again, I did not film that. I'll get some sewing machine footage a little bit later. But once I've got it glued and sewn, I'll go ahead and just use a utility knife to trim off that excess lining around the edges. You have to be somewhat careful not to angle your knife any which different direction, otherwise you'll have either thin or thick spots that you got to do a little more later to get rid of. But if you leave enough distance between your stitching and the edge, you got plenty of room to go. I got to punch the slots through the uh, the lining piece as well. Then I'm going to finish up some of the edges, uh, specifically the top of the, the mouth of the sheath, I think is what it's actually referred to as, on the front and back, because I won't be able to get to that once I've got it all uh, put together. And I'll also go around the back piece of the sheath, again, what's not covered by the front. I don't want to actually bevel the, the back piece and wind up with a, a gap there that I just have to grind through anyway where it's covered by the front. I'll also finish up the insides of the the slots when I do this. I'll bevel those, put some dye on them, and finish them up. Here's where I'm going to actually finish some edges. So I'm using a darker brown dye than what I used to dye it to start with. This is a show brown dye and I was using light brown before. So you got to be somewhat careful not to go too wild on it and put too much pressure and wind up with it squished all over the front because it'll leave a darker, uneven mark on it. There is a couple tricks on making it a little easier to do that I might talk about in another video, but for this I'm just being real gentle. And same as usual, I'm going to use gum drag again for the edge burnishing. Just smear some of that on there, let it soak in and kind of dry a little bit, and then go back with the slicker and smooth those edges out. Then it's time for gluing stuff together to get ready to fire the final stitching. Glue in the spacer. 
I like to make sure that the knife is still going to fit once I've got the spacer in there. This is kind of my last chance to make any adjustments. And this tool is called a rougher. It's actually, it's like a wire brush with sharp points ground onto all of them. And it's used exactly for what it sounds like, roughing up a piece of leather. And once you spread glue on both pieces, gotta be somewhat careful to get it all lined up real nice and neat. And I'm clamping it together with some, these big, uh, they're basically, their wing binder clamps for paper, but they work really well for this as long as the leather is dry. You don't want to use them if the leather is wet, they'll leave a black mark on it. start by back stitching four or five holes and then I stitch all the way around the front of the sheet oh, of course except for where the opening is there. and when I get done with that I'll just back stitch again four or five holes and then I'll lock all the stitching in that's true also if you're going to stitch it People who tie funny little knots to try and end off their hand stitching are just wasting their time. They should just back stitch four or five holes and that'll actually hold better than any knot you can tie in it. Then I'm going to this little 1x30 belt sander grinder thing and I'll grind all my edges with a 120 grit belt until it's uh, nice and even. I shouldn't call it smooth because it isn't, but we'll get there. Then we're going to finish off with some edge beveling again. Uh, these are areas that hadn't been edge beveled before. And since I ground on them, I would have just ground it all away. And the same as when I was finishing that top. We're going to go ahead and use show brown dye all the way around. Be careful not to get it on the front and back. Some gum tragacanth. Again, smear it all the way around. And once that's had a few minutes to sit, I go back with the slicker. And we're just basically polishing and burnishing that edge down to get it nice and smooth. Now this is the part where it actually makes the belt loop. So it takes a little bit of finagling and strength and if the sheet isn't the right size and shape, it won't work. So it's a little trickier to make your patterns for. Um, but it actually folds back and goes through those two slots and you have to kind of bend the sheet to get it to go and then it'll straighten itself back out. And I'm just going to work at it until I get that little spur to pop through. Then I wet the sheet down and I'm using a cobbler's hammer to uh, shape it a little bit here to fold that crease into it. You don't want to do that if it's dry, you could wind up splitting the leather. So you gotta wet it down and be sure that you got it wet to do that. And the same thing, I'm using the end of my burnisher here to kind of open it up a little bit for where the knife handle is going to go into it. And since it's wet, this is just like a holster. You would wet form the holster to it, the same thing with a knife. A little bit of work at it, a little bit of putting the knife in and out of it it'll stick a bit the first few times. It actually sticks until it's dry. And there's the finished sheath. Kind of a cowboy style single loop knife holster. <laughs>